Welcome back. You're watching Daybreak. I'm Victoria Rubadiri, still continuing with the newspaper review. Uh, still with me in studio, Honorable Manzo, Honorable uh, Wahome, and Honorable Kirua as we continue to delve into the top stories. Page two of uh, the Daily Nation. The Attorney General and uh, the IG of Police Boynet sued over police killings. 22 women claiming to have lost their sons or husbands through extrajudicial killings in Nairobi. They have sued the Attorney General and the Inspector General of Police for the government's failure to investigate the use of force by police. Now, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, the Independent Policing Oversight Authority, or IPOA, and the Director of Public Prosecutions are listed as interested parties in this particular case. Uh, many of the killings happened, according to this particular case, under the guise of counterterrorism uh, measures being taken in Mombasa, particularly. In a Transparency International report last year, they found that Kenya topped the list of African countries with extrajudicial killings. Uh, what do you make of this very serious case that's come up against uh, the AG and the IG police? You know, first and foremost, uh, the <coughs> police job is a big risk. And uh, if you are a police officer and uh, you have been investigating or following up possible uh, terrorists who are likely to attack a certain destination, like the way you remember, recently we had uh, in the Westlands, you know, the, 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 the supermarket which was raided and very many Kenyans were executed by, you know, um, these terrorists. <coughs> it means a policeman who is going to confront a terrorist Either the policeman loses his life or the terrorist loses his life. And uh, it is whoever shoots first. Mm -hmm. So in a situation like that, uh, and fighting terrorism is a very tricky one, uh, is, is, uh, is, 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 is a tricky situation. And um, the moment your child was involved in terrorism, you definitely know in one way or another. Uh, and if now they lose their life uh, to police, because police must have a lot of information, then you turn the tables and go and sue the police. So, so I think we, we need a balance so that uh, we are also forgetting a lot of police die on the line of duty, get injured, and no one ever compensates them or ever uh, follows up what happens with their families. So we need to have a balance and uh, you know each case, I'm sure, will be dealt on its own merit. Uh, what's the evidence be presented so that mm. these families can be uh, compensated? It's really a tricky one, but let's see how it turns out to be. I'm sure there will be some court judgments. Uh, and uh, you can be able to show clearly where police uh, really executed, mm -hmm. uh, where they had Melissa further. Because for you just to, 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 to be guilty, you must have prepared or planned to eliminate that particular person because we've differed in a different scenario. But now if you are on duty and you are following up a possible hideout of uh, terrorists, it means if they don't surrender, then you have to execute them because if they fight back, it means either the police lose life or the terrorists lose life. Uh, there was a video that was circulating on social media this week uh, showing a few young men who ransacked an Mpesa shop. They were caught on CCTV. The following day, all of them shot dead. Now, a lot of people were asking, what was the process to lead to their killing? Okay, they committed a crime, but we needed to see some procedure to then lead to the action that happened. And this happens to be a lot of the action that police take when it comes to young men. A lot of the filings in this particular case found that the men were between the ages of 15 and 35. So, relatively young men involved in these extrajudicial killings. But what do you make of this case? And, and such reports, when we, whenever we see young men just shot on Nairobi streets or anywhere else in the country for that matter. Okay, I, um, first I want to say that extrajudicial uh, extra killings are not acceptable at our loss. And therefore the police, the law enforcement officers, even the anti-terrorism uh, officers have a responsibility to ensure that they arrest. Mm -hmm. Indeed, the permission they have in terms of using the bullet is only, they can only uh, shoot you know, in a manner that may kill if their life is threatened. It's the second way that they are allowed to shoot is to actually shoot to, to maim, to disassemble, you know, to kind of you know, disarm the person even if they were armed. Mm. 
uh, of course, sometimes it is also very tricky because this, these boys are also training themselves. I don't know how they get this. They are very good. Some of them are, are good shooters. But uh, I think the police should be ahead in terms of how the, they can be able to cause arrest and ambush them without necessarily killing them. Either they are frustrated in their jobs, I don't know, but, or that there is a way that we are allowing that to happen. And uh, as a country, we are not following that to find out why did you kill, like you're asking. You, you know, they were caught on camera. It means the identities were almost very clear. So they should have told us that we couldn't arrest them or the, they would be actually being put to task to show why they killed. And I think that still happens. And we have seen police officers actually being taken to court for using their guns yeah. recklessly. And we must continue to encourage that they really use the gun, you know, properly, uh, responsibly, and the first option is not to kill. Right. As a country, we cannot accept that the first option is, is to kill because you can imagine the number of police officers who are handling the guns and that it becomes a free fall. They can shoot and kill whenever a crime has occurred somewhere. That cannot be the way to, you know, to, to deal with the criminals. Uh, but of course, uh, sometimes these reports from our, you know, you, you call, you say, this is a report by, uh, sometimes the, the, the standards yeah. they, they use to gauge Kenyans is not the standards that could, you know, you know the, the climate and the environment are different. They might using American standards, you know, to kind of, you know, because they say America is number this, Kenya is, um, I mean, you know, look at where we are in terms of, uh, of the country. So we, we should copy from the best, but I think sometimes we need to question where, what kind of standards we are using. I think in Africa we still have problems in terms of crimes and the way we handle crimes. Even our training for officers is very short and continuous training also mm -hmm. uh, is not there. Uh, finally, in terms of fighting the cases in court, you know, we established the IPOA. Right. And I want to say that as a government agency, they have been doing excellent work, uh, independent police oversight authority. In terms of investigating and following police uh, complaints against the police officer, and especially where they have used arms, uh, I think the, so far there are reports because I was sitting last term of parliament in the National Coordination and the National Security uh, Security Committee, Parliamentary Committee, yeah. and the reports we were getting every year from IPOA were, were excellent and the, basically they have started very well and the, the police don't like them. You can be sure the many times they came before the the, the office of the, the police department came before us and the Minister of Internal Security was always complaining about how IPOA is doing their work. Yeah. Of course they are not supposed <laughs> to sleep in the same bed because it's not, they are supposed to oversight them. So I think that uh, it is important that the complainants also know they can file a report there for investigation because as a crime, first you need to show in court that the police used the guns irresponsibly right. and recklessly. Because that still, because it's a case for negligence, uh, wrong use of the, the, the gun against the, 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 the persons that have been killed. And it's quite complex. Eh? So, so I think the report by IPOA would help. But many times, of course, the Attorney General has actually, because you'll find that after they kill them, yeah. there is no audit, there is no <coughs> forensic uh, evidence collected to be able to show this is how we did it and why we did it, there you will find that then the Attorney General will have scampi or you know, non-existent evidence to defend. So again, the government loses. I mean, here it says the women had actually, some had actually reported incidents to IPOA yeah. uh, to follow up, but they do want the IG to uh, help investigate a lot of these cases. Like you said, there's yeah. no forensic evidence yes, as to how these um, uh, judicial killings happen. The, the thing is, well, extrajudicial I, I, like, killings Maybe rather. because it's too recent, you know, maybe we can't maybe conclude that, it, that there isn't, all I'm saying is our laboratory is not yet even complete, the forensic laboratory. Yeah. Uh, they are starting to do something there, but I think the preservation, the collection of evidence still has a lot of challenges. So that it's, it's a continuous process and you know you can, this is not a job they can do in a week or in a, in a, in a month. But even IPOA takes quite some time 
sometimes, but they have very good officers. And, yeah. and that was a concern raised in yeah. this case, insufficient yeah. records of uh, yeah. Yeah. these police killings or even enforced disappearance, Honorable Kirwa. There's no paper trail mm. uh, to show, because even if these extrajudicial killings are justified, is there record to show this? Well, I, I think it's important uh, as a nation <coughs> to look at some of these items as a way of uh, building the foundation for posterity. Mm. Because y you realize even in these cases of anti-corruption, at times there is a lot of clamor, you're taking so and so to court. After some time, it is like nothing is happening in a way that we are able to document information and get back that we accused Moshima Manzo the other day, but we realized Moshima Manzo is clean. Yeah. This is very important because uh, documentation is something that mm. can assist us to build a case in future. Uh, coming back to the police killings, it, it is also unfortunate because in the process, so many innocent people mm. are caught in this crossfire. And those innocent people, their lives are so precious and uh, it, it is not just good to kill somebody if there is no sufficient evidence. But the, the other process also, the police at times get tired that we arrested this guy, we took him to court, he got, he, he got out and he's still doing the same thing. So as Mushima Manzo said, there is need for delicate balance between dispensing justice mm. to this young man uh, who is involved in some of these issues and also protecting the lives of uh, our policemen because they're also doing a very good job. Now, in short, we need to get to the f bottom of these issues. We need to know whether do we have any serious issues of uh, infiltration by the Al-Shabaab or other negative elements or are people hyping issues? You see, remember even during the days of Mau Mau, some people could report each other as family members so that uh, this family swept, they go to Manyani or wherever they went so that they give room for land. These are things that have happened before. If they can happen again. That when I have a problem with you, I will say you are Al-Shabaab and that is enough for you to be killed by the police. So we need to get to the foundation of it for us uh, to be able to be fair to all Kenyans.